We will now demonstrate the principles of doing an anastomosis in bowel that cannot be rotated, and we will use an end-to-side anastomosis to demonstrate such principles. Make an incision in the anti-mesenteric border of bowel exactly the same size as the lumen of the bowel that is to be anastomosed. Start by inserting a stay suture in one of the angles of the anastomosis. Once again, insert this in an extra mucosal manner, through both loops of bowel. Do not tie, but place in a hemostat and lay to one side. Insert a similar stay at the other angle of both loops of bowel. Again, place this in a hemostat and lay to one side. This allows the bowel lumens to be nicely aligned for accurate apposition. As the loop cannot be rotated, we will do the posterior anastomosis first, but in order to adequately display this, we will place stay sutures in the middle of the anterior border of both loops of bowel. These can be a simple through-and-through -through suture, as they will subsequently be removed. When both these are inserted, this gives a good view of the posterior walls of the bowel. Some surgeons may prefer to use non-crushing tissue holders for this purpose rather than the sutures, such as a babcock shown here. The posterior wall has been clearly displayed. We will now use a different suture technique. This will be a vertical mattress suture. Start by going from inside to outside, through the full thickness of one loop of bowel, and then go from outside to inside, taking a further full thickness. Following that, reverse the needle in the needle holder, and then go back just taking mucosa of both loops of bowel, creating a vertical mattress suture as demonstrated earlier in the course on the skin pads. This suture can then be tied using either a handheld tie or an instrument tie. Many surgeons feel that a hand-tied knot is a little gentler and more accurate. However, what is important is that an adequate knot is tied. The whole of the posterior wall should be treated in the same manner. Once again, insert a vertical mattress suture which involves full thickness sutures, reversing the needle in the needle holder and going back, and just taking the mucosa alone. In the bowel prepared here, the mucosa is not as obvious as in human bowel, where such a technique is much easier to execute. Again, a formal reef knot should be fashioned, and then continue the technique along the whole of the posterior wall. Once the posterior wall is completed, then the stay sutures can be ligated in the angles. Do not at this stage cut the stays, but replace them in the hemostats.
This allows accurate positioning of the anastomosis to be maintained for the anterior layer of sutures to be inserted. Once the two stays are tied in the corners, the stays in the middle of the anterior wall can be removed, and then the anterior wall can be completed using interrupted extramucosal sutures as performed previously. Once again, going from outside to inside, inside to outside, excluding the mucosa, but ensuring that the submucosa, the strongest part of the bowel, is included within the suture. These stitches can be ligated as they are inserted, and then the whole of the anterior layer can be completed in a similar manner, as for the interrupted technique for mobile bowel. Once the anastomosis has been completed, taking care that the sutures are evenly distributed without tension, then the anastomosis can be inspected firstly from the outside and then inspected from the inside. The posterior wall will demonstrate that the intraluminal sutures have been inserted in a vertical mattress fashion, while the anterior wall should show very little suture material as an extramucosal technique has been used.